Welcome to DTLT today. Welcome. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Hi, everybody. We got a full chat. We're going to pay the chat some mind, so keep in mind that. We are. We have a full chat. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us in the chat, particularly. Big fans. We read all your chats. <laughs> Should we mention that we have a chat that we watch regularly during the show? Because <laughs> uh, we do. There's a chat underneath this video. Um, exactly. That we watch regularly. Can I, can and it's just, quite full. <laughs> it is full right now. <laughs> and can I make a point that Luke Walter, who's at CUNY, who never watches our show either, compared, he said, oh, are you going to, I was just chatting with him, and he said, oh, are you going to go do that little Wayne's World thing you do? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, so we're now. in the DuPont basement. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wings World! <laughs> Wings World! <laughs> Can we say that? Am I allowed to disclose that? Dad? I don't know. We might uh, be shut down. <laughs> They're going to send us a letter in five days. I think we need to read what um, FERPA has to say about what we're allowed to say and what we're not allowed to say on the show. That's right. And although we do have a mole in, we have Boone from CUNY in. So we yeah. do have a CUNY mole in. We were just talking Good. smack about Walter. Good to know. So. <laughs> And we were actually, boom, we've been following and talking about your kind of um, hysteria about SOPA, so we'll bring that up at some point. <laughs> that might need, it, that it's might a, need it, its own episode. It's the FERPA SOPA show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let us go. Uh, what are we talking about today, Tim? Well, we're talking about Georgia Tech, of course. So yes. Audrey Waters, HackEducation.com, had an article on this, but um, it pointed originally to um what's the guy's name mark Guzdial, oh, yeah. i think but i'm Guzdial. not sure i'm pronouncing that right yeah good deal Guzdial. Guzdial. <laughs> anyway georgia tech has this wiki installation swickies um yep. that they mm. uh, they do course content on there they actually run some courses all through the wiki and similar it predates media wiki yeah. it predates the wikipedia 1997 it started so i mean this this is a groundbreaking area. Now, I will say, I went on, I was looking on the Google cache for it. It, it looks like computer science was using it a lot. It wasn't a campus-wide thing that was yeah. being used. But nevertheless, it, just in terms of historical content, exactly. you've got courses happening in a system <laughs> that existed in 1997. And it looks like it's still existing in 1997. <laughs> I mean, look, this isn't about the aesthetic of the no. system, right? <laughs> it's not. Uh, but anyway, so he posted that, Basically, Georgia Tech has interpreted FERPA, which, of course, is the, oh, help me out here, the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act of 1974. And it's, yeah. everybody in education Pretty knows what FERPA is because it always comes up anytime you're talking about any piece of software or system or service for students yeah. because it's for the protection of student data. And it always comes up. I, You've mentioned in a post that you did about this that it seems like anytime you talk about DS-106, there's like, you know, how quickly will someone bring up FERPA? You know, yeah. in the first, it's, it's really first like, you know, zero to question. 60, and the F word comes up. And we've even referred to it as the <laughs> F word. Yeah, the five-letter F word. Yeah, and it really does become that. And it's become such a thing that I don't even think people know what it means. They just feel compelled to say it. And they even say... I'm compelled to say this even though I don't want to say it. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, then why say it? And you don't even know what FERPA means because no one does. Well, that's the thing. It seems like it it is so loose in its interpretation or, or not clear enough to where every agency and organization can sort of bend it to their will depending either on their misunderstanding of it yeah. or on what they want to interpret it as for other goals of theirs you know if they don't want to use a piece of software it's easy to say well i, d I don't think ferpa allows this so yeah. th there's this gray this is probably area. a violation of ferpa right so there's this gray area that it exists in georgia tech decided that the swiki software uh or the way that it was being used i should say not the software itself but the way that the professors were using this software was in violation of ferpa and i think the point that luke walter made in a comment um in response to God, to a post I wrote was basically like, it's not so much that I agree that, you know, 
now UMW's found a solution and everyone owns their own data and rainbows and unicorns. But with the absolute step that it seemingly Georgia Tech took to say, look, we're taking these all down. Yeah. And it's just this kind of sweeping idea that it's not something we can negotiate. There's not some sort of gray area. Let's have our lawyers look into it and think about this critically. But it was like, we are taking this down temporarily, they said, on the official That's, release. It does say temporarily. So yeah, we've got to so be clear there. We'll put the link in the show notes for today. But Georgia Tech has an official release for this now. Because before we were trying to find out if this was even true, we saw a blog post. But it didn't make mention back to actual Georgia Tech. But this is an official release yeah. saying temporary removal of past course websites. Yeah. Um, basically, I guess, you know, pointing out that there are flaws uh, that – Here's what I find interesting about it because they talk a little bit about their interpretation of FERPA and That's the reason right. and that read it's that because I think it's interesting. Yeah, so it says the exposures identified by OIT, which is I guess their IT department, IT represent not just a few isolated incidents, but a pattern resulting from practices many of us follow in building and maintaining course websites. It's not simply a pattern in the College of Computing, which is wh who was using the Swiki software, but all G Georgia Tech colleges will have to deal with this issue. Simply put, FERPA prohibits the release of student names in connection with any particular classes in which they've been enrolled, and this connection can be either explicit or reasonably inferred. So they're basically saying when you look at these wikis, you can see that student is in that class. And that is a violation. That is a blanket violation, according to them. Which I think is really interesting, and this is a point that Mike Caulfield brings up, mm -hmm. and it's one that I think no one has been talking about. Um, a couple of things. FERPA makes no distinction between, right, and this is a really in, in, important point, revealing elements of the educational record to a student's classmates, revealing them to the greater web. Mm -hmm. There's no distinction. So does that mean if you have some information on campus, that says a student is enrolled in a particular class or a student mm -hmm. is has their name on an artwork or has their name on some sort of theater production which noise professor brought up that we couldn't infer that so does that make the fact that any kind of performing arts class is completely off limits well I mean, let's let's go even it, deep it's crazy well and let's go even deeper with that because the thing is it's easy to point to this stuff when you're talking about online education so it's easy because of the online software to be able to say, oh, well, that's not quite right. You shouldn't do that. But when you look in the real world, it's like I can walk around this campus and I can reasonably infer which students are in which class just by using my eyeballs. So I can look in a classroom and say, yeah. oh, that person's in that class. Oh, Charlie's taking that class. You know, oh, OK, that's that. What can a student do to prevent that? And how do you how do you meet those students needs let's say if it's a valid need for FERPA yeah. that a student says I don't want people to know I'm in this class uh, right. you're gonna need to black out these windows you're gonna need to use shades or something I'm gonna need an escort to and from my class because people can't know that I'm walking into a classroom and know that I'm actually in this class That's right. I, at what point do you draw the line and I think there's good points brought up in the chat um, and I don't want to cut you no, off, no, maybe, no, but no. I mean the points are no, the, the chat is important. Yeah, we yes. should talk about. We the don't chat. want to ignore the chat. We don't ignore the chat. the chat. We do love you. Yeah. Is the fact that is, do students have the option to enroll? And shouldn't it be the case that when a student has an issue and they make that clear, that we make you know certain, um, I don't know, qualifications, not qualify, certain kind of we make sure that they're able to kind of hide that data or they have control over that data to some degree. The fact that it becomes blanket that every student wants to hide this stuff and hence doesn't give the other students choices. Like, what are all those students that wanted that stuff out there, mm -hmm. that needed it out there for various reasons? We don't even consider them. Yeah. And so there's this weird kind of sensibility that that 1%, right, that's having an issue or that has some problem. We can't make accommodations for them. We have to call the whole thing off. Yeah. This is the same thing. And that's both what... Uh, BVMD and Dr. Garcia brought up, so I thought it was a good point. Andy, no, no, and I, you you covered what I was talking about, and and what well, it's you know it's the Web 2.0 stuff, and yeah. that was that was talked about as well about about how we, you know, we we do this by default on the web. We we are we open ourselves up as much as we want to, um, and it, you know it, it also gets back to those all the the discussions about you know h how free do we want to be, and it's almost like the free market approach to to your information and. Um, people are going to deal with this in different ways. This, this, I mean, there was no such thing as as online issues that we had to deal with when this mm -hmm. when this law came about. It was yeah. about protecting kids from 
stalkers or, or people who were looking for kids in schools, you know, to find out where they were. So they didn't want to associate, like uh, Mike they Caulfield could. talks about artwork hanging in the hallway. That's mm -hmm. right. Um, yeah. You know, so it was, a, it was about people who were looking for certain people. Um, it, it's another one of those, and, and fear is, is brought into this very quickly too. Yeah. Um, it's another one of those blowing out of proportion the fear of, you know, um, the, the online exposure that, that, that children have especially yeah. Um, yeah. That, that gets blown out of proportion. And it's clear that Mark Guzdial is being very kind of measured in his response. He is a mm -hmm. Georgia Tech professor. He's a computer science mm -hmm. professor. I mean, he lives his stuff. He's a regular blogger about the stuff that's happened in this department. It's clear that it's like, what the hell is going on? This is all the yeah. work we've done for close to 14 years. Well, right? and let's yeah. let's be clear. I mean, Swicky's was very much, it, from the looks of what I can tell, was his baby. I mean, this would be similar to you talking about someone doing something to UMW blogs. Well, it's why I reacted so quickly, and I think many other people, like Brian Lamb, had the disconnectivism mm. kind of play on this, which I love, that psychedelic animated gif of someone holding a guy's mm. leg yeah. by... I mean, but... The fact is, is you get scared because you realize 14 years down the line for them and their legal department just cut off a complete part of the ecosystem of that web and of the students' content and the student they created. That could happen tomorrow well, here. Well, with no, based with, just on this, with no debate and no, no. you know, no discussion about it. Like, yeah. what are the legitimate uses of this? Yeah, it, that's just. And that's that's the default way of doing things these days. A directive seems. came from the dean, basically saying we've cut it down temporarily. We're looking into it with our legal team. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. You know, now the local the, the 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 courses for this semester were not taken down. Just to be clear, it's right. not like students mm -hmm. came in and said, "Oh, our work's gone." Only from previous semesters. This okay. semester's work that's what was the, that's up. what the letter from Georgia Tech okay. said. Yeah, it's interesting. All right. Um, yeah, it was hard to tell from the website <laughs> yeah. what was running where <laughs> yeah. um, in that regards. But you know, the chat's talking a little bit about whether students can opt out or not. And one interesting point that Noise Professor was making, you kind of make as well, is you know he's talking about yeah. is that even right for a student to be able to opt out of certain things? Like, I mean, when you b boil yeah. it down, are you going to allow a journalism student to say, "I'm not publishing an article"? Because I because of I don't want my date I don't want my name associated with the work that I created. There's some yeah. legitimate problems with that argument in and of itself. I'm not going to do a presentation in front of my classmates because yeah, I you know right. I don't want my name associated with the work that I did. And I won't I'll, do group work. Right. I won't do this. I won't do that because um and then FERPA becomes this catch all uh -huh. for everything. And Joe Murphy brings up a great point, as do several other people in the chat. It's like Let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. How do we make this a communal discussion mm -hmm. about, okay, what does it mean to create a kind of effective um, identity online? What does it mean to create a kind of a, uh, some sort of pseudonym, right? What yeah. does it mean to frame? This is such an awesome uh, um, occasion mm -hmm. to think about what Web 2.0 affords us in all these different kind of um, ideas of controlling our data, maintaining our identity, reclaiming some of those ideas, right? Why aren't these questions coming out with Gmail? Yeah. I mean, if that's the question and like, or you know, Facebook. The, I mean, this is like huge. Now, the mm -hmm. whole other point is, do we push people now to say, you know what, don't even use UMW blogs. Get your own blog space wherever you it is, and we'll figure out some sort of syndicated sort of aggregation. Leaning policy. towards last night. It's like, you know, tweet. forget it. Like <laughs> the, the, the universities are so screwed up, and they're internecine, schizophrenic attempt to make themselves irrelevant is working and we just have to basically step out of that implosion mm -hmm. and find another way which to me is really sad yeah. it really is sad I mean as yeah. much as I want to say extra institutional like I want to believe that there's some hope that we can still be relevant and the, what were the cockroaches that'll be left after the, <laughs> the implosion <laughs> and so then the question becomes like by doing that are you implicit in encouraging students to violate FERPA in some way and is that grounds for being fired like are you putting your job on the line by encouraging your students to not use university resources because of that I mean again it's I, like I couldn't I imagine you would I think it's exposure I think it's the right. university limiting their exposure to well, lawsuits. yeah, it's all about lawsuits. It has nothing to do with teaching and learning. It has nothing, <laughs> it has nothing to do, to do with, with actually protecting kids. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's all <laughs> about covering your ass. I mean, it's the culture we live in right now. Now, I want to actually point to um, Ted Major. I don't know if you know Ted Major. 
He blogs at pedagogy.learningbusiness.net. Oh, okay. He has a great post. Uh, what if Georgia Tech is right about wikis and FERPA? And this is kind of a provocative post, but he actually knows some of the history uh, around this. He talks about uh, the Supreme Court ruling of Gonzaga versus Doe, and he talks about basically the history of the FERPA ruling. And his kind of a so his assumption, and we'll link in the in the show notes, is basically like we may be better off having students get their own space and manage their own space because FERPA specifically talks about all this information being on institutional servers and managed and maintained by institutions. And that's what we do with UNW Blogs. That's what Georgia Tech does with their SWICI. That's what UBC does with their setup. That's what the Commons, CUNY Academic Commons does. And you know, all of us who are doing this with Web 2.0 tools, particularly you, Boone, too, I mean, this is some, a question we have to ask now. Like, are we now in some kind of you know, terrible situation where the good we were trying to do is going to turn into a potential lawsuit for our universities, and they're going to turn on us and say, kill it. Done. Well, and it's, meant, it's in many ways why I, and we talked a little bit about the freakouts and, and, and other, other issues that happen. A lot of times, sometimes our ways around these laws are, are better than the original fear. You know, we, we yeah. get around the copyright and the piracy issue. I mean, piracy, uh, you know, sites open up all the time. You know, you, yeah. you can get stuff when you want it. Nothing actually goes. It just makes it a little bit harder in some cases, and, and issues yeah. like this as well. You know, maybe something better comes out of it because they have forced our hand to, to kind of make it better and have students have their own individual spaces to work on. So, um, <laughs> I don't know. Wouldn't it be nice, though, if, like, our institutions use this as an opportunity to have these conversations and, like, to talk about, okay, what does this mean about digital identity, uh, the protection of student data, and the web? Yeah. which in 1974 wasn't really a big thing. You know what I mean? Like, wasn't really on everybody's radar. No. And the possibility of, you know, different notions of privacy. They had just gotten done sending the first emails, I believe, at that, at that time. <laughs> That's so, right. Two years later. Engelbart had just figured out the mouse, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And my hope is that, you know, I mean, the idea of FERPA is centered around students and student data and its protection for the students. So why aren't they getting any say in this? Like, why why aren't we going to the students and, no. you know... Because the you, students don't know anything. They, they have no <laughs> idea that this is going on, although I would argue that, yep. you know, anybody who was involved in this Swiki project that was a student should be outraged right now. You know, yeah. And any student who sees their work just suddenly disappear because it violated some some misinterpretation of a law sitting somewhere it should be outraged by this it, we should be consulting with the students before we should even be making these broad strokes and measures I think that's a huge point and I think another point is you know it also should have us thinking more about student-centered design I mean that's why canvas I think has gotten so many people's imagination LMS or not mm -hmm. and why aren't we thinking about our infrastructure IT email all that stuff along, I mean, the idea that we're giving them a choice between Hotmail and Gmail right now mm. in general is a, is a false choice. Mm. Give them a choice, have them get their own email, their own de domain, and we bring it in and manage that stuff. We, we conceptualize our IT programs all together. And if you really want to get serious about FERPA, you'll really get serious about reimagining at the very core what an IT organization does. Keep in mind that OIT at Georgia Tech, the you know, information technology is the one who basically said to the dean, this is potentially problematic. Right. Pull this stuff off. Let's deal with it. I mean, are you kidding well, me? I, A CIO is determining this stuff about academic information and academic content? Right. That's when we got the ass driving the head, right? <laughs> we really do. Like, the IIT is like the ass yeah. of any institution, and they're driving <laughs> the, the brain. It's and, like, you know, just because you got diarrhea doesn't mean... Where, where are you going? I'm, 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 I'm hanging on every word right now. <laughs> Doesn't mean you. So Joe Murphy you had a good question. Right now. Head. Okay. <laughs> Joe Murphy had a good question. He said, "Do students really think of school web projects of having that kind of permanency?" I would argue that at least in UMW Blog's case, and I would hope in more and more cases that they do, that they can believe that the work that they create in higher education can carry on with them in some form, whether or not it be supported on campus, but ways to export it, ways yeah, to yeah. be able to point back to it. There's no reason with the uh, advances that we have in storage and technology, there's no reason that higher education can't support this. Now, maybe right. you have issues of scale on larger campuses, but 
Penn I mean, State does it. I mean, they do have scale. I mean, this stuff has scale. I think I think this that issue that question forces students to recognize that that they want to have their own permanent space. Right. You know, they right. they have it. They have the ownership of it being permanent and on their space that they control. Right. I mean, that's important. And I think the real important things is, you know, rather than us making decisions one way or another, I mean, this is basically FERPA was a ruling that read in its most liberally and I think generatively means students need to be enabled to have control over certain data yeah. to control who sees it and we as institutions need to foster that space for them to control <laughs> right and and these open Short spaces that, empower students to do that. Yeah. And that's the that's the nut here is that, <laughs> you know, these wikis, these blogs, these open spaces, they're not prohibiting students. They're not breaking the law. It's empowering the student to make decisions about the data that they create and own. And Mark uh, Guzdiel, who's, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, Mark, and you ever listen to this, but you probably <laughs> won't. But <laughs> the point is this, is he brought up, like, I understand what you're doing with UMW blogs. I understand that as an argument. But what happens when students leave and they lose their UNW email and then they can't access that stuff and they want to change something? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think that's why we on a regular basis say change your email from your UMW to your Gmail or Hotmail, whatever you have. And if you want, delete your stuff before you go. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we encourage them. They're going to forget their username and password to 50 other sites they created on the web, and they're going to have to have some mechanism to retrieve it. Mm -hmm. And we need to build in a mechanism moving forward that it won't just be tied to their UMW email. If there's any benefit of them having Hotmail now or Gmail linked to the university, it's that those emails are in perpetuity. Yeah. Like, they can't always access them, so at least it solves that problem. But, I mean, if any student wanted to change something on the web on UMW blogs, they could do it by retrieving their password now for the last two or three years through their G uh, live account and could change that information. So in fact, that question is answered to some degree. Yeah, not mm -hmm. to mention the, the ability to export your content before you've left the university. It's not, yeah. you know, you're not putting stuff in a lockbox that you can't get back out, right. you yeah. know, before you're gone. So That's right. It'll be interesting to see. So Georgia Tech posted this uh, yesterday yeah. So, and they do say that it's temporary, but the question is, how temporary are we talking here? And had, I'm hoping, you know, if people continue to push them on this, as I hope the professors at Georgia Tech will, that they will continue to clarify their position and how they've interpreted FERPA, and hopefully some of that can be changed. Well, there's a part of me, and I, I'm going to be honest here, there's a part of me that's hoping that, hoping that it all goes to hell in <laughs> FERPA. It just all comes, and I, everybody's forced to close down their systems. Because we would still get, I mean, I don't think we get fired, right? No. And when we could join the disconnectivist school that uh, Brian Lamb set up, no. and then I could get back to blogging about movies. Because I'm tired <laughs> of DS106 and the whole sure. Unity Blogs thing. I could get back to blogging what I want. Work is hard. And then, yeah, and then, like, do whatever. Like, people come in, I'd be like, hey, sorry, Wiki's Ferpa. I would love to be the one to say when faculty come in and say they want to work with me. It's like, but what about Ferpa? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I can complete that project. Uh, the FERPA. <laughs> I think I, I, I actually think I'm going to take down my last post because you know what? Huh? We're not FERPA compliant. Yeah, yeah, it might come back to haunt you. We should really. I think I'm going to go take down you and other blogs, <laughs> just in case. Or maybe you could password protect it. Just create a, a walled garden around yeah, that. Just going to throw project. something in the Apache to prevent everyone from seeing it. <laughs> right. All right. Well, Oof. I All right. think we've covered it enough. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks, See chat. you later.